Welcome everyone. Today is the 31st of March. This is Frank Damore from the End Times Research Ministry, connecting the dots between Bible prophecy and current events. I'd like to invite you to go over to my website where you can get my book today for free. I just updated it again as you're going to see some of the news that I covered. But this book, as I said, is free and you can download it today at my website right now by going over there and clicking this link, March 31st, that edition. Let me get right into prophecy here. I'm again going to start with 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, because of what is happening right now in the Middle East. And the Lord told us this, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Well, number one, the Lord told us, Keep on the watch because we're going to see these things take place. And they were going to happen as a woman with birth pains. Jesus also mentions this same thing in Mark 13, 8, where he talks about the birth pains. And of course, the Middle East has no peace, and they've been trying to get this peace process going, and it's stalled, it's failed. I've been warning about this for years, that there's not going to be any peace in the Middle East. There's going to be a war instead. And we know this for sure because this is what the Lord revealed to Paul the Apostle in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, when he tells us the sudden destruction is going to come. He didn't say peace was going to come. He said sudden destruction. Now, I want to incorporate with this the warning from Zechariah 12, 3. Anybody messing around with Jerusalem is going to be cut into pieces. Watch this as the Lord reveals to us in that Zechariah 12, 3 prophecy. And he says this, And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, and all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people in the earth be gathered together against it. So we know Israel is going to be left alone in the last days, and they're well on their way of seeing this fulfilled. Not only that, but anybody who, like I said, messes it around with Jerusalem, messes around with the Jews in, in these last days trying to divide up the nation of Israel, the Lord Lord gave us a warning there. You see it for yourselves. It will cut you in pieces. And so I've been warning, don't mess with Israel, especially during the time of the peace process when you have Barack Obama sending John Kerry over to Israel to try to divide up the land. This is really bad for the United States. And every time we see some major disasters happening when they're trying to divide up the nation of Israel, and you can see all of this documentation in my book if you want. So I want to go over to an article I'm going to just give you the highlights of the article. You'll have the link there at my website. If you're watching the YouTube channel, you'll be able to get all this information it's in its entirety. Now, the headline, Israel offers to free 400 more prisoners if Abbas extends the talks. Now, going on in the article, it says, Israel has offered to release a new group of 400 Palestinian security prisoners in addition to the fourth and final group of longtime terrorism convicts who were set to go free this weekend if the Palestinian Authority agrees to extend peace talks for another six months. Now, the Times of Israel learned from the Palestinian sources on Saturday night. The U.S. anxious to arrange for a continuation of the talks backed the offer. And some sources claimed Israel was holding off on freeing the prisoners because the rumors that the PA would back out of the peace talks once the fourth round of convicts were released. Now, this is an ongoing saga. It's been going on for year after year after year. And I've been posting it year after year after year, telling and giving my warnings that there is no peace plan that will be signed. I don't care if they release 400 or 4,000. The PA, the Palestinian Authority in Israel, is not going to come together to any kind of agreement. Now, let me give you some information here about what's going on. As I said, that Obama is sending Kerry over. So March 31st, which is today, John Kerry returns to the Middle East with peace talks close to crisis. And this is what it says, and I'm just giving you the highlight of it. It says that the U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, was flying back to the Middle East for the second time in a week on Monday as the last round of peace negotiations with the Israeli and the Palestinian leaders appeared to have reached a make-or-break point. And this is 
what I have been warning. I said the day is coming when this is going to happen, when they're going to be able to come together and say, we can't go any farther. And that's when all hell will break loose. And we're getting to that point. There's no question about that. It says, amid the fury, take a look right here, amid the fury of intense diplomatic context in Jerusalem. State Department officials announced that Kerry was flying to Tel Aviv from Paris and would arrive in the region on Monday evening. And according to the officials, Kerry spoke with leaders from both sides as well as with the White House before deciding to travel. And after consulting with his team, Secretary Kerry decided it would be productive to return to the region, said the State Department's the spokesperson. So. There you have it. Again, we have Kerry going over, doing the same thing he's been trying to do ever since Barack Obama was elected, and that is mess around with East Jerusalem and give away the capital of East Jerusalem and make it a Palestinian capital. That's what Kerry is trying to do. And also, Kerry is trying to give the, the Israeli land away to make Palestinian state within Israel, dividing up the land. Not just dividing up Israel's capital city of Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, but the land of Israel, making it two states. And of course, when you do that, you really have to watch what's going to happen. Believe me, I'm on a watch. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that over the past, we've seen major disasters fall on the United States when they were trying to do this. So I'm paying attention to what's going on. But here is the deal. The bottom line is they are calling for peace and safety. There is no peace and safety, no final peace agreement. And so we're in the second phase now of First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, the sudden destruction part. We just have to stand our ground, keep in the word, keep watching for the things that Jesus told us to watch for because you will see those things take place. Now, uh, as I said, there's no peace agreement. And I wanted to bring to your attention this article that came out from the Telegraph. Look at the headline. I don't even go any further than this. It says, Israel's defense minister, there will be no peace agreement in my lifetime. Well, if you knew what the scripture had to say about this, then you would understand that this official from the Israeli armed forces was dead on. Now, he may not know the word of the Lord, and he may not understand, but common sense tells him by what he's been seeing is there's not going to be any peace agreement. And this go hand in hand with what we see from the scriptures and what Jesus told us. So whatever the case is, whether the Israeli defense minister understands or not, he is in line with what the scriptures have to say. There will be no peace agreement in my lifetime. Now, this does not have to do anything with Daniel 9.27 where the Antichrist, when he comes, he's going to confirm a peace uh, covenant with many in Israel, obviously, as it says in the scriptures in Daniel 9.27. And that period of peace will last supposed to last for seven years, but the Antichrist is going to stop and stop the sacrifices halfway through the seven-year period. In other words, three and a half years into it, he's going to stop it. But this is later on. This is going to be coming, we believe, after the Ezekiel chapter 38 war. Now, the Psalm 83 war will be coming before the Ezekiel war. And this is the one where I'm saying that there is not going to be any peace agreement signed. It will bring on the Psalm 83 war. And then later on, there's going to be that other war where uh, Russia is going to lead that war against Israel. And we know who's coming with Russia, Iran, Libya, Ethiopia, Tunisia, Morocco, and a host of other Islamic nations that will be coming against Israel, then I believe that will be the time that after that war, Antichrist will confirm a covenant, and that will be the beginning of the end, or the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period. Now, we know that the earth is going to shake, especially in Ezekiel chapter 38, there's going to be a massive earthquake that's going to shake. You could read it for yourself when you read Ezekiel chapter 38. But in the meantime, one of the other prophecies that the Lord told us to look for is found in Matthew 24, 7. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, in Luke 21, 11, 
he mentions it again, but now he says, and great earthquakes, as you see highlighted in yellow. So two of the signs we're supposed to be looking for are many quakes and the other great quakes. And I know that they're coming. I want you to prepare for it. I don't know who's going to get it, what nation is going to get it, although I can tell you they are coming and they are going to be big ones. Now, one of the things that really bother me because I live in the United States, let me scroll over here again, and I know that John Kerry is trying to divide up the land, and I know from Scripture that anybody who tries to do this is going to be cut into pieces. That's why when I see America start to show signs of earthquakes, in the back of my mind I'm wondering, is God going to use earthquakes like he used earthquakes in other countries? to curse them when they were trying to divide up the nation of Israel. It is possible, and I'm watching for that, and I'm warning anybody who, especially who lives on the West Coast where the earthquake planes are, or the faults are, then you should be ready and have your bag packed. What I mean by that is you should have a quick getaway bag, with medical supplies, water, some blankets, flashlights, and things of this nature because the ground is going to shake below you. I can guarantee that. Sooner or later it's coming and because of the nature of what Obama is doing, I would say sooner. Now here is some earthquake news that I want to give to you, but let me just show you what I wrote here. It says, one thing is for sure, a big earthquake is on the way. If Christ said to look for these things, then count on seeing them. The only question that remains is this. Where will the next quake be? Now, Yellowstone has been active lately. If you've been following my site, you'll see I've been putting up a lot of information about this. Now, going on, I wrote, The thing that concerns me is if this goes off, it, will, it could be disastrous for the West Coast of the US. Knowing that Obama is still trying to divide up Israel in the back of my mind, I'm repeating myself, but it's okay. In the back of my mind, I wonder if the US will be cut into pieces via Yellowstone. No one can tell for sure, but this I know from tracking disaster over the years on nations who try to divide up Israel, there is always a disaster that falls on the nation who attempts to divide Israel. Now, of course, there is the question of the huge quake in L.A. Is the current quakes in L.A. area prelude to a big one? Well, if you live anywhere on the west coast of the U.S., it would be a good idea to put a fast getaway suitcase together just in case. Now, I want to show you a little bit of news that I picked up today from Good Morning America. I want to go over to their site, play you the news that I showed, and it talks about the quake. So bear with me. We'll go over there. New video of the earthquake and over 100 aftershocks that have rocked Southern California. They have rattled plenty of nerves and millions of people still on edge worrying about what might happen next? ABC's Ryan Owens is in Pasadena with the very latest. Good morning to you, Ryan. Good morning, Lara. We're inside Caltech, the university where seismologists have had a very busy weekend. I want to show you something. That's a map of Southern California. You see all those little red dots right there? Each one of those, an aftershock. They haven't caused any damage, but they sure take a psychological toll. <laughs> The 5.1 magnitude quake wasn't the big one, but it was big enough. Watch how the jolt upstaged this high school musical Friday night. The earthquake's epicenter was in Orange County, about an hour's drive east of Los Angeles. The shaking did more than rattle nerves. Just look inside this man's house. Everything was on the floor. Most of the dishes I have left are in the dishwasher. Outside, it cracked some of his neighbor's foundations, broke water mains, even triggered a small rock slide. <laughs> Nobody was seriously hurt, but what's happened since Friday has left a lot of people on edge. Glass was everywhere. More than a hundred aftershocks this weekend, a couple pretty strong. Our affiliate KABC caught one on camera. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, as long as this is going on, let me just tell you a little bit about what happened to me here. And this all happened, by the way, when the movie Noah came in to Los Angeles the first day of showing the earthquake hit. 
And keep in mind, the movie Noah, the way that Hollywood portrayed this movie is nothing compared to what the Bible has to say. They made this movie uh, foreign to what the scriptures really say about Noah and how it went down. And I believe, who knows, whether the Lord had his hand and took a little shaking. He might have seen how the curse is, uh, uh, the curse that we are warned about with dealing with Israel and this Noah Ark blasphemy came out. And maybe he just decided to shake things up because most of you know who've been in an earthquake like I've been in. I've been in now probably seven of them. And I know that when the ground begins to shake, like you see in this video here, whoa, yeah, whoa is right. You think about Jesus Christ. You think about, am I going to die? And when those thoughts run through your mind, run through your brain, automatically you want to get ready. Ready for what? Ready if you die, what's going to happen to you? So, but I was sitting in the parking lot. I was just ready to take off. I was with my brother, L down in Palm Springs. And as I was sitting there, just ready to go out of the parking lot, all of a sudden I felt this rolling motion and I turned to my brother Al and I said, I believe that we're having an earthquake. And he said, I don't feel it. Well, about two minutes later, when I was out of the parking lot driving towards my brother's house, I got a phone call from Amy Naomi, one of the assistants from Ascent Ministry, who I deal with every day and she's a great help. And she just got off the phone. Uh, apparently, she felt it. I mean, she did because she called me and said, did you feel that earthquake? And I said, yes, I did. And she said, well, it was a big one in L.A. and she had felt it. And so I had, the, I just had a strange feeling, man. I mean, it, it really does rock your life when the ground shakes like that. And so something is going to happen or something may not happen. That's what you're going to see in the, in the news here as it finishes out. But I wanted to bring to your attention those people who say that they don't know the Lord or they're atheists. Let me tell you something. Things change instantly when the ground changes. Just remember when the earthquake comes, remember who the Messiah is, the real Messiah. That's Jesus Christ. And you better have Jesus in your heart if something happens to you. Let's go on. We are still feeling earthquakes. Every time we have another aftershock, it, I mean, it rattles you. So the kids are more scared than anything. There is a small chance, less than 5%, that this quake was a foreshock, a preview of a bigger one. Still, seismologists say it's only a matter of time. They say there's a 99% chance of a 6.7 magnitude or larger quake somewhere in California in the next 30 years. Seismologists assure us that all of these aftershocks are perfectly normal. The good news, we haven't had one strong enough to feel since Saturday night. So fingers crossed, George. Our fingers are crossed for you, Ryan. Thank you. Let's get more on this now from earthquake expert, Dr. Lucy Jones, a seismologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. And Dr. Jones, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. Tell us what these aftershocks mean and what they don't mean. Uh, they mean that this is a normal earthquake. We should expect to have them like this, and they're decaying just like we would expect them to. So not necessarily, as Ryan said in his piece, a sign of bigger things to come, even though it's been about 20 years since a major earthquake in California. Well, that's right. And not in California, just uh, in maybe LA, in California. Sorry. Anything really... Yeah, in the L.A. area, we really haven't had anything close to this. Well, we used to have them every year at this level. The last 20 years has been some of the quietest we've ever seen, and we have to return back to a normal level. We haven't stopped quite that So does that mean we're in for a new kind of seismic season? Well, we should expect it's possible. I mean, we might have just had this as a flurry and it'll go back down. We won't know for certain. It's like saying, you know, is this storm connected to climate change? You have to wait and see how the pattern develops. But there's so much concern here because this uh, quake was on that Puente Hills Falls, which is especially dangerous. 
Oh, well, that's right. It's, it's not actually on it. It's just above it, but associated with it. And it's a fault that doesn't move nearly as often as the San Andreas. We get big earthquakes from that fault every 100 years, and on the Plenty Hills only every 2,500 years. But because it runs right under downtown Los Angeles, it's like the most damaging earthquake that we can imagine happening in this area. Okay, Dr. Jones, thanks. So there you have it. According to the news, it could, could not happen. But again, in the back of my mind, knowing the scriptures, knowing what the Lord had warned about, I, I'm often thinking that it could be an earthquake that could shake up this nation, whether it be on the East Coast or the Madrid Fault, there in the middle, in the, uh, the middle of the country. Only God knows, but let's watch the news and understand if it does happen, you'll understand that this happened because they're trying to divide up the nation of Israel. Perfect timing. Now, when we're talking about earthquakes, we want to obviously talk about what's going on in Yellowstone, a volcano that they're talking about if it erupts. They're talking about the super volcano, and there's been a lot of activity there lately. And, of course, I posted this information. You'll see it yesterday. There was a magnitude 4.7 earthquake. A couple days ago, I posted how all these bison and herds in Yellowstone were running out. You see them running on the road, getting away from the area. Is it a prelude to what's happening, maybe as a result of the activity that's going on in Yellowstone? And these animals have this instinct to run because they're afraid? Only God knows. Is it connected to the shaking and all of the aftershocks in L.A.? I don't know. But I do know this. The Lord said there will be many earthquakes in diverse places. And that's what we're seeing. And he did say the great earthquakes are coming. And when you put that together, both those scriptures together, with the curse of God and you see carry over there, that's what really bothers me. Let me go to another site. Now, I also found it interesting that very little news is coming out about these earthquakes in Yellowstone. Here's the headline, for example. Take a look at this. It says, Yellowstone earthquake gets no notice despite the size. The 4.8 hit at 6.34 a.m., according to the University of Utah, seismograph stations in the area. And more than 25 smaller shakes were recorded starting on Thursday, including two of the 2.8 and 3.0 soon after midnight Sunday, and another four in the hours after the 4.8. The second largest was a 3.3 monitored at 9.12 a.m. Now, you know, there's a lot of people who call about the conspiracy theories, which I, I don't talk much about on my website because there's more than enough information, prophecy news connecting without ever using conspiracy theories. Now, the only thing that I want to say here is, is it possible that the Yellowstone officials don't want to alarm people because they don't know if a big one or this volcano is going to explode and they're not saying anything? Only God knows. All I know is a lot of the information is being suppressed. It's not going out in the mainstream media, which could be dangerous. I don't know, but we're going to find out. That's for sure. Everything passes away. And without any more rumblings, then we know that it's just the average small quakes maybe that have been hit in the Yellowstone area. Or it could generate into this huge, massive explosion and end up being a super volcano as the officials were talking about. Now let me go over to this article here. Now here's another article, the new earthquake fears from San Andreas Jr. Now this isn't the major fault but it's a smaller one and what they're telling us it could be worse than the bigger one experts say that the bigger earthquake along the lesser known fault that gives southern california a moderate shake could do more damage to the region than the long dreaded big one from the more famous san andreas fault the puente hills thrust fault which brought Friday night's magnitude 5.1 quake uh, centered in La Habra. And well over 100 aftershocks by Sunday stretches from the northern Orange County under downtown Los Angeles into Hollywood. A heavily 
populated swatch of the Los Angeles area. So this is the one that George Stephanopoulos was addressing about the smaller area or the smaller fault, but it could be more damaging. And again, we just have to wait and see if the rumblings continue or not. I wish I could tell you that it, that it could or not, but I can't. We all just have to stand on the watch and look and see what happens. Now here's another one, I'm talking about another earthquake in uh, the Geysers area hit a magnitude 3.3. Three. Uh, three. Let me go over that for a second. There's another one right here. You can see this. So you have the Geyser area hit by a magnitude 3.0. It just gives you the map of where that was located. And again, the reason why I'm posting this is because the Lord said there'd be many earthquakes. This is just here in this one local area. But if you take a look at the earth and the information about the earthquakes, we see earthquakes happening every day. And, but the difference is this. When you look at what those scriptures say about all the things taking place at the same time, that is what is important because we're seeing for the first time in one single generation all of the things taking place at once. And that was the key to knowing how close we were to seeing the Lord come back. All right, so now I'm going to go to one of the prophecies that if you've been coming to my site, you've noticed just about every single day I've been posting information about either the birds, the fish, or the animals dying. And I told you that this was going to be a, on a continued basis. You're going to keep seeing these things take place. Now, since the last time that I gave a report about these birds, fish, or animals dying, there's been, a, again, a lot of activity. I want to catch up on it all now. All this information is going into my new book. But take a look. I'm not going to go to each one of the links. I put those links at my site so that you'll have full access to them. But I just want to give you the highlights of what you're going to be reading once you go there. So, and again, this is where I la left off on my last post. I believe it was from the 21st of March. So we have now on March 25th, you see all the different days, the 25th and the 25th, 7,000 fish wash up dead. And it gives you where they are at the end. This one is in Madagascar. You have fish die off and the shellfish due to algae in the Coffin Bay in Australia. And on the 27th, hundreds of fish found on the beach. And again, this is Jakarta in Indonesia. On the 27th, on the same day, another report, thousands of fish died suddenly in a river. And this also took place in Indonesia. And then again on the 28th, you see 7,000 birds killed due to outbreak of avian flu. You've probably seen a lot of this information if you read my book about the avian flu and I told you that more was coming. And here we are and you're going to see more reports like this. Then on the 30th, hundreds of dead fish found due to pollution. Again, this is in India. And the last, March 30th, 2014, hundreds of dead fish continue to wash ashore. And this was in Trinidad. So it's happening. It's continuing to go on. I have page after page after page in my book. It is very, very lengthy of all the reports that I've accumulated since 2009. And again, this is happening when everything else is happening at the same time. I want to make that very, very clear so that you understand we have the special signal that this generation has been chosen to see Jesus Christ return. No other generation. I'll challenge anyone. I want to make this challenge known that if anyone can show me another generation where everything that the Lord told us was going to happen all at once, show it to me. From that generation was complete. And we'll have something to talk about. But we did not see Israel born. We didn't see the rise of the Roman Empire. We did not see the rise of the Russians and how the alliance is coming together in the last days to set up the Ezekiel prophecy. We didn't see the Euphrates River drying up like it is right now until this generation. We didn't see the army of 200 million soldiers from the east 
that are going to cross the Euphrates River up until now. We didn't see the woman riding on the beast as you see in the European Union who have taken on the woman riding a beast as their national symbol. These are just a few of the things, the special things, including the increase of knowledge and people traveling back and forth, specific prophecies spoken about the last generation, and that is us. And most of you already know it's because of the computers how fast our generation is seeing the increase of knowledge. All of these things are happening now, including the birds, the fish, and the animals dying, and we're seeing the news come faster and faster. Now, one of the other signs is disease. You'll see it right there, pestilence. That's what he's talking about. And so the information that I gave a couple days ago about Ebola, which is one of these diseases that are spreading, we now saw that the cases of Ebola, it was uh, confirmed that they are the cases of Ebola now in, the, uh, in this region here in Liberia. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. And of course, there was another article that came out, the death toll still rising in F at the West African Ebola outbreak. And we saw, I believe that last week, there was a case that somebody left Liberia, and he went over, either it was Liberia or West Africa, I can't remember now, you'll see it at my post though. They went to Canada, and there was a case of uh, Ebola that showed up to the signs there as well. <coughs> well, in any case, this article said that the death toll of West, West African Ebola virus breakout has risen to 66 people, according to the World Health Organization. The WHO released an update on their site Thursday reporting that the Ministry of Health in Guyana has today reported that four laboratory confirmed cases of Ebola. So there you have it. They know exactly what it is. And of course, Jesus said these things are going to happen. And just like I said before, never before have we seen it all at once, including the wars and rumors of wars of which Jesus showed us in Matthew chapter 24, 6 through 8. And I just put right here, rumors of war, you'll see it here. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Then he goes on to tell us, the nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, things, all of the things that we're seeing right now. And it's going to get much worse because the end is going to be coming as what? All are the beginning of sorrows. In the Greek, it means birth pangs. So, do we see wars and rumors of wars? Well, just about every other day. But today's news it says that the North and the South Korean exchange artillery fire across the sea border. Artillery shells in territory north of the North Limit Line in the Yellow Sea at 12.15 p.m. local time. Now, the reports South Korean news agency, Yonhap, after several shells landed south of the border, South Korea military opened fire with K-9 self-propelled howitzers. So, exchanging. Is there going to be a war again? We know for sure that war is going to break out. Whether it's going to break out between North and South Korea, I can't tell you that, but I do know that wars and wars are coming. More nations will be fighting against themselves, and it wouldn't be surprise, surprising to me at all because we know where one of these wars are going to be fought, and that is going to be fought between Israel and the Arab nations that border Israel, as I already showed you from the lack of peace, as I've already indicated from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, where the Psalm 83 war will break out. So in the meantime, let's watch, keep our eyes, what's going to happen between North and South Korea. Now, we've seen a lot of these exchanges before and nothing happened. But if we're moving into the birth pangs, it just gives us more incentive to keep on a watch just in case this time it actually ends up into a conflict. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you is in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, in Revelation, 
chapter 13, verses 16 through 17. Now, in Daniel chapter 4, we see the increase of knowledge in people traveling back and forth. I've already told you about computers, if you will, and how computers have really propelled our generation into the fast uh, track for increase in knowledge. With this increase of knowledge and with the increase of computer use, we know now that the world can be monitored, they can be tracked, they can be labeled, they can have a stamp in their skin, by the way. And you'll see all this in my book if you read my book, that would be able to identify who you are. And they do have the capability of today to put a mark in your skin where they can deduct money from your hand without ever going into your wallet. That money will take right out of your bank. It's already here. You don't have to wait for it. So when you take the increase in knowledge and you see how this one world government is going to be coming together and how there's surveillance by the Antichrist monitoring everything that's going on, because we know in verse 17, and no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So we know that the Antichrist is going to be able to control everything and he's going to have a hold on surveillance. There's no question. Now we'll take a look at this. It says Japan will walk head first into an economic buzzsaw. And we know, and I've been warning in the book about this collapse that is coming. We know that the United States, for example, is in a trill or seventeen trillion dollars moving towards eighteen trillion dollars of debt. They can't sustain this kind of debt much longer. And so when the American dollar dies off, and we're seeing ramifications of this now in many parts of the world, there's going to be a collapse and it's going to propel the Antichrist into position where he's going to have the authority and the ability to stop everyone from buying or selling. And he's going to have the technology and the monitoring systems behind it to make sure that unless you get involved in the, his system, you're going to be out of the system and on your own, and then eventually they will be chasing you. And according to Revelation 24, they're going to behead you if you don't bow down and worship or take the Antichrist mark. Now, according to what we see in this article, the Japanese are heading for uh, inflation, which is going to be bad for them. I and we can see here, I'm not going to go through it all, but it's the consumption tax is set to rise from 5% to 8%. And when you read the article, you see this is going to be bad news for Japan. Now, even China is in a, in a mode right now where they're starting to slow down, which is very critical for the world. And it could be something that is going to really push this uh, world economy for moving one step closer to the collapse that is going to rise the Antichrist. Look at this. China's plan for global network of surveillance satellites spurred by fruitless search for missing Malaysia Airlines. And so the capability is here to monitor everyone. China's in the mode right now. They're sending up, as you can see, all of these satellites, surveillance satellites, cameras, just about everywhere you go, you're on television. And it is on a record pace. You can go into the store, you're monitored. You go into the carport, you're monitored. Your hotels, you're monitored. I mean, everywhere you go, ball games, think about wherever you are, you're monitored. They can even look at you in from your computer. And people think that they're not monitored. Your phone, wherever you go. They've made it now. When they first came out with the cell phones, they couldn't track you, but now you can't hardly find a phone that is not tracked. In other words, wherever you are, they can track you. This is the society that we're living in, the surveillance society. And the only reason why it's here now is to fulfill prophecy, where the Antichrist will have the ability to control and monitor everyone. These are the last days. Now, in relation to the Isaiah 19 chapter, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 4, we know from this prophecy that the Egyptians were going to fight against themselves. They started this about two years ago, and they are still in the upheaval now. 
But in the prophecy, not only did they fulfill Egyptians against Egyptians, like we saw in Isaiah chapter 19, but we also know that the Lord told us that Egypt was going to be given over to a cruel Lord. And so I'm telling the people, please watch what's going on in Egypt because there's new elections that are going on right now in Egypt. And according to what we've seen so far, it certainly looks like Isaiah 19 is being fulfilled. So take a look at the news from Egypt. Egypt announced a president election for May 26th and 27, a poll likely to be swept by the retired army chief. Now, Abdul Fayyad al-Sisi, who deposed the president in July, he, he took out Marsi, Mohammed Marsi, for the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, Sisi is expected to win the vote, riding on a wave of popularity for having removed the divisive President Mohammed Marsi after mass protests demanding his resignation. Now, one of the reasons why they wanted Marsi out is because he was trying to establish Sharia law. Now, a lot of the people in Egypt, Egypt may think that they're going to get something uh, better. And I think that if Isaiah chapter 19, as we're already seeing the Egyptians against the Egyptians, if Isaiah 19 is being fulfilled, there is a very, very good chance the cruel Lord we see warning about could be sissy. And I know that the coming months are going to tell us. So one of the things you should be looking for, if there is this protest, continually from the people who don't want Sissy, if the protests keep going, you're going to see that Sissy will step in and force his rule, and in that case, he could become this cruel lord. Only time will tell, but it's our duty to stand our ground, do exactly what Jesus said, keep on the watch. There's so many people around the world who are not doing that, and you want to make sure that you're one of the people who are abiding in the Lord. And if you are, you're going to watch what's going on. So let's talk about the food crisis. Why am I going to talk about that? It's because Christ warned us about it. So I'm warning you about it. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 6, look what he says. And I heard a voice in the middle of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. When you do a study on this, you know that the Lord is showing us that people are going to be working all day long for a quart of wheat. That's for one person for one meal only. That's not three meals a day. That's only one meal. So you're going to be working. If you're left behind when the Lord removes the church, there is going to be very, very little food and you will be working for that food all day long. You see the sign that I put up here, no food or beverage allowed beyond this point. If you're stuck in a tribulation, you're going to be on that road that you're not going to like. The road of seeing this horse of Revelation 6.6. 6. So in my post, and many of my posts, I'm just going to give you a couple highlights that I showed you. For example, in my November the 1st, 2013 post. I give you the name of the post, I highlight it in yellow, the warning, as you can see right here, as I've been warning both at this site and in my book, you will see the cost of food continue to rise, which they have. Now, that was back in 2013, and I've given many, many other warnings. I've been doing these warnings, by the way, all the way since uh, 1976, and they are on track be and they have to be on track because this is what Jesus told us to look for. So every year, I know that the price of food is going up, and I know why. Because of what the Lord told us to look for, which I'll give you an indication of. Now, if you want to read my entire post, just click on that link. When you get to my site, you'll be able to read it. Now, here's another one from my September 6th post of 2013. And you see this. As you can see from Revelation 6.6, 6, is related to the story Jesus showed us in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 2. For kingdom, for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner land who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into the vineyard. 
What we know from Christ's teaching is that people living during the tribulation period will have to work all day just as in the Matthew chapter 20. I don't say chapter here, but chapter 20 verses 1 through 2 story. But as you can see from Revelation 6.6, 6, there will be paid with one very small meal of wheat or barley. And there is going to be a major food crisis worldwide as we see the bees die off. And the reason why I put this in here, because I was reporting on more bees that were dying off in large numbers, mass numbers. And without the bee pollination, obviously, you get very, very little crops. So let me continue on what I said. The bees die off in these huge numbers. And we can see the handwriting on the wall lead the world to, to fulfill Revelation 6.6. 6. Keep in mind, the bees dying off is only part of the reason why the food supply will disappear. Now this is where I give you the other reasons. Take a look, take a look at this. There will be other reasons crops will be wiped out, such as wars, intense heat, which will cause droughts, floodings, uh, will wipe out crops. Insects will begin to eat up the crops and crops disease will also increase. So there are many different reasons that I cited back this in September of 2013. Now, if you don't like the sound of starving to death as Christ warns, then it would be your blessing to take Christ at his word and receive his salvation today so as his child and this is going to be important he can take care of you through the troubles being poured out on an unrighteous world keep in mind if you're here during the tribulation it's because you rejected jesus but if you receive the lord the messiah he is going to save anyone who calls on his name and he is going to take you into heaven and the wrath of god when it's poured out during the tribulation, you won't be part of it. And if you are, then it was by your own uh, choice that you were left behind. Now, as I warned and I showed you some of the warnings from my past post, let me show you some of the current news now. And you'll see this from the UN News Center. Weather increased demand pushes global food prices to the highest level in months. This came from the 6th of March, 2014. World global prices in February rose to their highest level since mid-2012 as a result of the unfavorable weather. Like I told you, weather is going to cause the increase to one of the things, and sure enough, they're writing about it. And the only reason why I was confident in saying that is because I know what the Lord pointed to. And it's easy when you know what the Lord says because when you make a prediction like this, it's going to happen. It's because the Lord's prophecies are 100% fulfilled all the time. So when you see the changes in the weather and you know what's going to happen, as far as what the Lord said in Revelation 6.6, 6, it's easy to tell the people what to expect. But you have to know what the Lord said. And that's how I make the connection between current events and Bible prophecy. Because I've read the scriptures and I understand what we are supposed to be watching for. And I'm just making it easy for you to understand by connecting those dots. So let me go on. Unfavorable weather and increased demand. The United Nations Food Agency today reported in a news release the UN Food and Agriculture Organization FAO said its most recent food price index which measures the monthly change in international prices of a basket of 55 food commodities including meat dairy sugar and cereals averaged 208.1 points that is about 5.2 points or 2.6% higher than the slightly revived index for January. This month's increase follows a long period of declining food prices in general, but it's too early to say if this is true reversal of the trend. So, and, and it goes on to say here, the weather is probably a major force driving up prices for certain commodities like sugar and 
we often wonder in most of the articles that I'm reporting about a lot of the articles in my book you're going to see that pertain to what's going on with the wheat. Is Christ warning us in the scriptures about the wheat? When he talks about that here, the wheat and the barley? I believe that he is. And I believe that you're going to see more news about this in the future as we see more weird weather coming upon not only America, but the world driving up the food prices as we see in this global report here from the uh, agricultural organization. Now, take a look at this. This just came out. The real inflation fear. U.S. food prices are up 19% in 2014. And one of the reasons why this hyperinflation, guess what? Drought. Isn't that what the Lord showed us in the last days? He talks about it in the book of Revelation where he talks about the intense heat that is going to scorch people. And obviously when you get intense heat, what do you get? You get drought. And when you get drought, what do you get? You get lack of water. All these things are driving up the prices of the food. I can't make you believe what the Lord told us, but I can bring you there so that you could see it. And if the Lord speaks to your heart, and I'm hoping and I'm praying that he does, that maybe through this one post today that you'll receive Christ or at least pay more attention to the surroundings around you and hopefully you want to come back to my website where I connect the dots between Bible prophecy and current events. So that is the news for today, March 31st, 2014. And in closing, I just want to say this. I want to thank everyone for coming to my YouTube channel and allowing me to connect the dots between the prophecies and the current events for you. And in closing, just let me say this. You can get my book today for free by going to my website. It is the most current book that you're going to read. March 31st, that's today. And you can go into the bookstore and pay whatever you want. It won't be as current as my book, and it won't be free. So please, take advantage of my free gift to you. This is what the Lord wanted me to do. I'm doing that for you. I'm keeping it up to date for you. If you'd like to write to me for any reason, you'll see my P.O. box or my email address right there at my website as well. This is Frank DeMora, the author of The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. Connecting those dots for you. God bless.